this morning it is by the grace of god that i bring you god's word hallelujah praise the lord we'll be doing one or two things you know hallelujah oh hallelujah the man of god said that well i was glad when he said unto me let us go into the house of god and some of you are are you glad to be in the house of god so when they say hallelujah what do you say praise god hallelujah all right media team let's go i'm going to project some um, images all right and i need you to look at them and then we we flow praise god the first image please what do you see what do you see toyota okay let's move to the next image what do you see it's what <laughs> somebody says a bird somebody says twitter okay the next image please <laughs> what do you see kfc hallelujah the next image please powerful microsoft the next image please What do you see? I see something. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now you see that I asked the media team to project these what images or logos, if you want me to put it that way. And I'd say that every one of you were able to do it. Identify what each image represents. Okay? When the image of what Microsoft was projected, you didn't say Twitter, did you? Why? Because you know the word logo or the image of what? Of what? Of what? Microsoft. And some of you may know what they stand for. Some of you may know what they do. Some of you may know their values. Hallelujah. So whenever you see this image or this logo, you do not associate it with Twitter. Hallelujah. Even though they are all technological words, companies, praise the Lord, you don't call the image or the logo of Microsoft Twitter. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you here? And so the title of my message is what? Alignment to God's express image. Hallelujah. We're going to talk about what? Alignment to God's express image. The word express is very important to me this morning. Hallelujah. I could have said alignment to God's image. Okay? But we'll look at something. Why we are not just calling or talking about God's image, but God's express what? image hallelujah now when you take a look around everywhere you go whether your house your company wherever you go you see images you see things that represent ideas or people or um anything all right anything that we do we interact with images and the dictionary explains or defines image as a visual representation of someone or something Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And an image simply means what? A visual. It means what? You can see it. Praise God. A visual representation of someone or something. Hallelujah. So when you take a picture of yourself, what do you see? You see what? Your image. Praise God. You don't say that, hey, Reverend Barry has taken a picture and he's seen... <laughs> Ruth. Hallelujah. You, you, you will not associate the image of what? Reverend Barry to Ruth because that image does not represent who? Reverend Barry. Praise the Lord. And so let's look at the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to 28. I'd like you to project the New King James Version. And can someone please read for me? Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. 
Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we go back to verse 26? Verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our this, image. Then God said, let us do what? Make man let us image. make man in our image according to what? Our likeness. This is God speaking. The counsel of God speaking. He says what? Let us make man in our what? In our image according to our likeness. Then he defines what the image will do. Praise the Lord. What does he say over there? He says what? Let them have what? Oh, flow with me. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle that creeps over everything. Hallelujah. So anytime you see what? An image, that image represents what? Something or someone. If you want to understand the meaning or the purpose of a thing, look at its origin. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So God did not just get up to say that let a certain creature have dominion over the face of the earth. No. The reason why this creature called man was able or was given the mandate to rule over the planet earth is because God in himself is king and has dominion. So anything that has to do with rulership must be like the king. Are you here? Anything that must have authority over a certain plane must be like the king. Praise the God. Praise the Lord. Now, God, when you read the book of Genesis chapter 1 all, all the way downwards, right? You see that God created a whole lot of things. But never said that, let the cattle have dominion over the fish of the sea. But he says, let man have dominion over what? Everything that I have created. Because what? Man represents me on this planet. God is the king of the universe. God is the king of the spiritual realm. God has dominion over everything that he has created. Praise the Lord. But when it comes into the physical plane, that is this earth, you and I are seeing, all right? God has given you and I the mandate to do what? To rule and have dominion. Praise God. So like from the beginning, when you see the image or the logo of a certain company, that thing you see there represents something. You may not necessarily see human beings standing there, right? I didn't show you human beings from Microsoft or Twitter, did, they? did I? All right? But when you see that image, you may know that these people what represent something. Hallelujah. And so I've written here in the definition, um, image gives what? Purpose. Hallelujah. Or identity gives purpose. If you want to understand the reason why you are here, you need to check your source. Praise the Lord. And now let's go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 19 to 20. Out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. So Adam gave names to all cattle, mm. to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. Hallelujah. I like the last part. It says, but for Adam, there was no what? Found, found a helper comparable to him. Now, okay. Bible says that what? God created the animals and brought the animals to who? Adam to do what? To name them. In other words, to give them what? An identity. Why didn't God give the animals identity by himself? Have you asked yourself that question before? Why didn't God in heaven? Okay, I've created this animal. Then I give an identity to this animal. Yes, yeah, since I created it. 
Why didn't God do that? Because God had given man the authority to name things, the authority to do what? To rule and govern over a plane. The reason why fathers are given the mandate to name their children is because what? They have been given the authority. Please don't be laughing at preaching. Don't be laughing. We are in the church. Be serious. When you are before your, what do you call it? Your interview, we're going for an interview and they're asking you questions. Do you sit there and be laughing? So be serious when you come to the house of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So God gave man what? The authority to rule. So God himself brought the animals to what? Man or to Adam to name them, to give them what? An identity. Now, verse 20. Let's, let's look at verse 20. 20. So Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. But for Adam, there was not found what? A helper. helper. Now, before man fell, everything was good, Bible says, right? Everything was good. But in this instance, God is saying that what? There was not found a what? A helper. Praise the Lord. Now, there are some people that proclaim that, oh, I'm a self-made millionaire. I am an independent man. I'm an independent woman. I can do things by myself. Even before the fall, Bible says that what? Man needed help. Are you here? So in the image and in the likeness of God, you cannot do without help. So if you are in church or you are, yeah, yeah, you are like in a place like what? Zion Impact and you are denying yourself of help, then you are not in the image of God. Hallelujah. Oh, are you getting me? It says the word, but for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. Now, many times we say that, yeah, Adam needed a wife and blah, blah, blah. Let's look at Genesis chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. Hallelujah. Genesis 5, 1 and 2. This is the book of the genealogy of Adam. In the day that God created man, mm. he made him in the likeness of God. Mm. Two. He created them male and female and blessed them and called them mankind in the day they were created. Hallelujah. So he calls Adam. Adam simply means mankind. So man and woman. Praise the Lord. So in the previous verse that we, we read, it says that well, man had no help. So I can't do without you. You can't do without me. I can't do without God. Praise the Lord. This was even when everything was good. So how much more now that we are trying to work things out. So, in the image and in the likeness of God, you need your brother, you need your sister. Praise the Lord. You cannot do without yourself. So, people that proclaim that I'm self-made, I'm independent, I am this, I can do this by myself, you are not in the image of God. You don't represent the express image of God. In fact, you are falling. Praise the Lord. And now, when we go to Genesis chapter 3, we see the fall and how mankind fell and... Bible says that what? God rescued mankind. Now let's go to the book of Exodus chapter 19 verse 1 to 6. Exodus chapter 19 verse 1 to 6. In the third month after the children of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on the same day they came to the wilderness of Sinai. For they had departed from Rephidim, had come to the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. So Israel came there before the mountain, and Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And it shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to all the children of Israel. Hallelujah. This verse of this instance came when God had rescued what? The people of Israel from Egypt. Praise the Lord. When God had drawn them out of bondage, then he called, or Moses went up to God. And God told Moses, tell these things to who? The children of Israel. Now ask this question. Why didn't God tell Moses this when the people were in Egypt, but when they had come out of Egypt? 
Ask yourself that question. Why is it that God, of course, God spoke to Moses when they were in the land of Egypt. All right, God said a whole lot of things. God did a whole lot of things. But why is it that when it comes to this very special thing, God does not tell them in the land of Egypt, but when he has rescued them from the land of Egypt and has brought them to this mountain? Praise the Lord. Because where they were, they were in bondage. They will not understand anything that what God will release to them. They had already possessed a certain image, a certain identity. So trying to what? Tell them who they really are. They will not get it. Are you here? So God calls them out and brings them into a place and says what? I have called you, I have made you to be what? A kingdom of what? Priests. Hallelujah. So God brings us to himself and then re-educates us and tells us who we really are. Now these are what? God's chosen people. If we are a kingdom of priests, then we must be what? Kingdom of priests. Hallelujah. Are you here? So the reason why we are brought here like a church like Zion Impact is to what? We rescue you from the hands of the enemy and then tell you who you really are as a what? Kingdom citizen in this world. Praise the Lord. Now, why is image so, 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 so important? Why must we align to what? The image of Christ or the image of the Son of God. Praise the Lord. Now, if you really want to understand the purpose of a thing, what, one thing that you ought to do is to do what? Talk to the manufacturer. What was the intent of the manufacturer? Why is it that the manufacturer decided to make this chair? Why did the manufacturer decide to make this air conditioner, or this fan, and so on and so forth? Romans chapter 8, verse 28 to 29. And now we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Mm. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, mm. that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Hallelujah. It says, for whom he foreknew, that is you and I, he also did what? Predestined to be conformed to the word, the image of his son. So before you saw your body, God had already destined that your life must be conformed to what? Or to what? To the image of his son. Now what does conform mean? Conform simply means comply with rules. Hallelujah. When we say something is conforming to something, that's, that thing is complying to what? A certain set of rules or behave according to a socially acceptable standard. So when you say your life is in conformity with what? The image of Christ. What God is simply saying, that what? comply with the rules or the standards that Christ has set for you. Praise the Lord. So, before you and I came into the scene, it says what? We were created to be conformed to the image of his dear son. You and I are here to do what? Represent the, the God that we serve. You and I are here to expand the kingdom of God. Now, those who have been given that mandate are the people who are created in the image and in the likeness of God. I really want you to get this thing. Hallelujah. Because some of us see ourselves in a way that God doesn't even have a clue about. Praise the Lord. Another definition for conformity is what? Similar in type or form. And I really like this one. It says what? Similar in type. In other words, when I see God, I must see you. Or when I see you, I must see who? God. Hallelujah. And so the famous scripture, um, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. That says what? If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. The old is going to behold the new has come. Hallelujah. Let's look at the NLT version. NLT. NLT, yes. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ mm -hmm. has become a new person. Mm -hmm. The old life is gone. A new life has come. Hallelujah. Gone. It says what? The old life is what? Gone. The old life is what? Gone. The life that I was living in Egypt is what? It's gone. And what? The new life has, has, what? has come or has begun. Now, 
Life is a very vague word. When I say vague, it's, it's so broad. All right? We have different forms of life. We have the human life. We have dog life, cat's life. Hallelujah. We have sheep life. Name it. We have even tree life or plant life. All right? So maybe somebody may say that, okay, he did not define what kind of life he's talking about, but you're wrong. He says, if any man is in, in what? In what? The old life is what? The old life is what? The life of Egypt is what? It's gone. And the new life has begun. What is the new life? Praise the Lord. Now, a dog has life. Human beings have life. The sheep has life. But do you realize that we don't eat the same thing? Do we? Or you eat grass? <laughs> Someone says salad. No, you don't. You don't you, that's not grass. Hallelujah. But we also breathe air. Don't we breathe air? We age. We grow. All right? Animals give birth, don't they? Human beings also give birth. But you realize that what? They are different things. They are different ways. And a human being cannot compare himself to an animal because they all have life. No. There is a specific life that God demands from you. There is a certain life that God wants to see in you. So even though the sheep has life and the human being has life, if I see a brother or a sister living like a sheep, what would you think of that person? Hmm? <laughs> no, talk to me. What would you think of that? Because the, the, the sheep has life, doesn't it? It has life. Human beings also have life. Fishes have life. So if I see my brother or sister living like a fish. Exactly. You need deliverance. And it's weird. And it's weird. And when you look at Genesis 1, 26 uh, to 28, okay? God says that word. Another thing that God declared that let them be what? Fruitful. Let them be what? Let them be fruitful. In other words, there is a certain kind of life that bears fruitfulness that God is looking for. Even though a sheep may be fruitful in giving birth, that is not the kind of life that God demands from you and I. Hallelujah. Even though the fish may be fruitful, even though the apple tree may be fruitful and bearing fruit, and even in John 15 it says that what? We ought to bear fruit. If you don't bear fruit, you'll be cut off. So you say that because the apple fruit is bearing fruit, I want to bear fruit like the apple fruit. Yes, you are bearing fruit, but is that the fruit that God demands from you? Then you are not representing the king who brought you here. You are representing another life. So do you understand why God didn't tell the people of Israel why they are what? They are kingdom of priests in Egypt, but when they came out. Because anyone who is in Christ, Bible says what? The old life is gone and the new life has begun. The new life has begun. And that new life is what? Let us create man in, the, in our image and our likeness. We are like God. God created you and I to be like who? Like him. God is fruitful. And so he demands that you and I will be fruitful, not in the sense of another life. So those of us <laughs> who are my setting forms of people that have nothing to do with God, you see that these people are wealthy. These people are making strides. These people are conquering. These people are expanding. And you admire such people, my God. You are like a human being admiring pigs that is giving birth. I'm telling you. Because the pig gives birth. Hallelujah. You are marrying a certain form of fruitfulness that does not come from the origin of God. So you and I are doing what? Making a mistake. Now I want to come into the house of God. Alright? The word image also looks very broad, doesn't it? Fruitfulness looks very broad. Hallelujah. But when you come down a little bit, God demands a certain fruit from you and I. Now, there may be a group of pastors 
in a church like Zion Impact. But every one of us have what? A specific call. The God demands that what? We produce a certain kind of fruit. Now, I want to illustrate this with water. Everybody knows water, right? We all know water. But do you realize that water has three different forms? Hmm? What's the first one? It's liquid, vapor, and what? Ice cube or solid. All these are water. But are they the same? Are they the same? But they are all water. In a certain temperature, water becomes vapor. In another temperature, water is liquid. In another temperature, water is solid. All right? So if we are water, let's say we are water, and God demands that you be like vapor, and you are manifesting as liquid, even though you are water, are you bearing fruit? Are you bearing fruit? So yes, God says, let, them, let us create man in our image and our likeness. Let them be fruitful, blah, 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 and go on and so on and so forth. Even though water is water, these three different forms require a certain temperature to function. They require a certain area to function. If water in the form of liquid decides to go and dwell in a place with zero degrees, that water or that form will not function as it ought to be. So if God has planted you in Zion Impact, which is a great church, and he demands that you are in Zion Impact, but he said that I want to go to church B, which was also planted by God himself, and you said that yes, God planted this church, this church is powerful. You are like what? The liquid that wants to be solid. And you may be doing well. But did God create you to be vapor? Ask yourself. Did God create you to be vapor? Hallelujah. Amen. And so, knowing where God has put you, when you go back to the book of Genesis, the Bible said that what? I think, yeah, Genesis 2, verse 8, I think so. That God put man in the garden. There's a place that God has put you and I to function. There's a place where God has put you and I to represent him. So, ask yourself this one. Are you representing God in the place he put you? The question is... <laughs> The place that God puts you, are you there? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, when we fall short of the glory of God, like Adam and Eve did, they were in the garden, weren't they? They were in the garden. But when God came, he says, Adam, where are you? I thought they were in the garden. What happened to them? When you are in the place that God has put you and you fall short, just note that Salewa Yera, and you need God's mercy. And you need to be aligned. So it could be that, yes, you are in the Garden of Eden, but you are hiding. Hallelujah. Are you hiding? Yesterday, was it, yeah, Tree was asking me about the call of God. <laughs> and I gave him a scenario. All right? He says, this is the question he asked me. Why is it that people are running away from the call of God? The call of God. All right? why, why, why do people run away from the call of God? And he was wearing a cap, all right? And I asked him, can this cap fetch water? When you're wearing a hat, can a hat fetch water? It can fetch water, can't it? Yeah, to some, to some, to some point, it can fetch water, right? But was the cap, the cap made to fetch water? It wasn't made. It wasn't made. Was Adam created to hide in the garden? So in that case, Adam was not representing God as he ought to. The reason why Adam was not able to represent God as he ought to was because what? He sinned. Praise the Lord. And another thing that you also need to know is that the place that God has put you, okay, you need to know the rules, the standards that are there that you must follow. Praise. Otherwise, you will compare yourself to somebody that looks like you, that has a form like you, but God did not destine that you will be like that person. This is kingdom advancement. When we want to see kingdom advancement, what we want to say is that be in the place God has put you and represent him. 
So if God has put you in a company or in a place and he wants you to represent him and you are like Hagar and you want to run away because you are seeing one or two afflictions, be careful. Be very careful. When I was looking at the story of Hagar, I was like, ah, your mistress is worrying you. It's afflicting you. Tell it, leave the place here. Eh? After I'm pregnant, I can't take it. But when the angel of the Lord came, he says, go back to your mistress. What, what to be that? How? Go back to what? Your mistress. So why is it that the man of God said something that what, when you are going through afflictions, small afflictions, you want to run away and move, say, hey, Charlie, these people are troubling me. Why are they doing this? God told Hagar, go back to your mistress. And this is the revelation that Hagar got, that you are the God who sees. God is seeing the affliction that you are going through, but he says, stay there. God is doing what? He sees the afflictions that you are going through. Unless God himself tells you move, then you go. Why is it that you want to run away from the place that God put you? These are the people who run away from the call of God. And the call of God is not simply about people like us standing here and preaching the word of God. No. Anywhere God puts you to expand the kingdom of God, that is your call. That is your call. That is what? Your call. That is your image. You represent God in that area. The man of God was saying, if he's asked to clean chairs, he's doing it because what? That is the call that God has given you to clean chairs. As you, are, you think that as you are cleaning the chairs, it's just something uh, uh, basic. But you are expanding the kingdom of God. If you don't know, let me tell you. You are expanding the kingdom of God. If you come and there's no one to direct you to park your cars, or nobody to arrange the chairs. Just imagine what will happen here. Oh. Imagine that the, when you came, Charlie, the chairs were dusty, they were dirty. There's no cameraman, there's no usher, no one to open the door for you, no one to do this, no one to do this. Just imagine what will happen. Will you come to church? Will you sit down with your nice dress? How you want? <laughs> Hallelujah. It's because God has given you. So don't, don't belittle what God has given you. See, if you have this mindset, you know that ah, I'm representing God in the place that God has put me. Hallelujah. I am doing what? Representing the place that God has put me. So know your place, child of God. Know your what? Know your place and do well and function and make sure that what the kingdom of God is advancing over there. Praise the Lord. Now, identity is very key. Again, when God wanted to bless Abraham, God had to change his name. Yeah, God had to do what? Change his name. Ah, but God is all powerful, all mighty, all wonderful. Why not? Why, why is it that God will not bless Abraham in his father's house? Come on, that's blessing. Hallelujah. But let's see something in the book of Genesis chapter 17, verse 4 to 5. Genesis 17, 4 to 5. As for me, behold, my covenant is with you. And you shall be a father of many nations. Hold on, man of God. It says what? As for you, my covenant, covenant is with, is with you, you. And you do what? And you shall be to me a father of many you nations. You shall be to me what? A father of many nations. Take note. Let's go. Five. No longer shall your name be called Abraham. Uh -huh. But your name shall be Abraham. Ha. For I have made you a father of many he nations. Has, he has said it again. Because what? I have made you what? A father of many. Now the name Abraham simply means exalted father. Exalted. The father is exalted. But the covenant God had with Abraham was not just to be exalted. But what? To be a father of many nations. So God cannot bless Abraham in the state Abraham. You didn't get it. God cannot bless you in that state. 
that you are in. It's not that like God doesn't want us to be fruitful. No. It's not that like God doesn't want us to take dominion. No. It's not that like God doesn't want to see expansion. No. But those who take expansion, those who are supposed to rule, those who are supposed to have dominion, those who are supposed to have influence are the people who are in the image and in the likeness of God. So if you are not in the image and in the likeness of God, God cannot bless you. You can't rule. You can't even walk in your call. Oh, Jesus. You can't walk in the call. Because the call is in Christ. If you're not in Christ, how do you walk the call? God cannot bless Abraham in the Abraham state. He had to change his name. He had to do what? Change, that's what? A change of what? Identity. Abraham represents what? A father of many nations. So he has to bear that image and likeness of the father of many nations. Who is God? Father of all spirits. God himself is what? He's the father of what? All spirits. In other words, he's the father of many nations. So if you want to see fatherhood, we can look at Abraham. Hallelujah. That is who, isn't God a father? When Jesus was teaching us how to pray, he says what? Our father. So Abraham represented God in the place of what? Fatherhood. Hallelujah. What are you representing God? Hallelujah. What are you representing God? So the reason, one of the reasons, okay, why we are not seen, you see, you've heard powerful, powerful things about yourself, and you ask yourself, Dabeng, or, or you've never asked that question before. You ask, when, when, when? When you ask, God, your word tells me that I'm great and mighty, but I'm not seen even girl, then great. I'm not, I'm not seeing it. I came to tell you, one, one of the reasons is because you are not aligned in the image and the likeness of God. You, you are not aligned. Look at what happened to Adam and Eve. When they missed it, God had to kick them out from the place of authority. It's not like God, God, God didn't love them. All. God loved them. He, he, Adam didn't go and consult God and say, God, make me the ruler of this earth. No. It's God. He sat down with his counsel and said, let us create man in our image and in our likeness. But the moment they stepped out of that image and likeness, they missed it. Child of God, you are not independent too. You need help. Well, help even Jesus, man of God, Jesus, the son of God, even he needed help. A time, a time in the life of Jesus, I thought Jesus is the son of God. I thought Jesus created Joseph, his father. I thought. But when it was time for him to be rescued, he had to rely on his father. When it was time for Jesus to feed or eat, he had to rely on his mother. I thought Jesus created them. It even so look, the one that we are looking up to needed help. When he was even going to die, he needed help. Somebody had to help him or carry his cross. He needed help. And you, you are here. You say, no. Self-made. Okay, continue. You are self-made. And another thing, that says the word, men always ought to pray and not faint. We rely on God through prayer. So anytime you deny yourself of prayer, what you are saying that God, I'm self-made. Ah, Jesus needed help. Or he didn't need help. Even when he was to squat, feed a group of people, he needed help from a small boy. A small boy. He needed help. He took help from what? A small boy. Not you. What do you have? What do you have? What do you have? The fullness of God that dwells in him bodily needed help and a way. Oh. So when you take a look at yourself, if indeed you are the image and the likeness of God, you rely on God. Praise the Lord. So one of the one reasons why we are not seeing dominion, we are not seeing expansion. Okay, they say, oh, Charlie, go out and evangelize. This one, the man of God, I was there, I just had evangelism. See, yeah, same way, you. One of the 
of the reasons why we are not going out to evangelize is because we are not in the image and likeness of God. Jesus went out to evangelize, didn't he? He went out. He says, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. He went. But we, we have failed. We don't want to go out and tell people about the kingdom of God. It's because you and I are not in the image and likeness of God. We have failed. All we think about is self, self, self. Like someone said, me, myself, and I. Oh, everything is about you. Everything is about, but look at God though. Look at God. Even when he came to creating man, he didn't say let God, he said let us. Even God. Even what? God. Let us. You see, one of the things about kingdom is what? We are a community of people. As we are seated in this auditorium, we are a what? A community of people. We give help to each other. Everyone is gaining help from one another. This microphone is helping me to project my voice. The chairs you are sitting on is helping you to feel what? Comfortable. Hallelujah. Just take a look around. Everything you see here is an image of a representation of something. And that thing is giving you purpose and what? Meaning. Without this microphone, we can't project. Hallelujah. So why are you seeing yourself as a self-made person? When from the beginning, he says, and well, man needed help. That's how God made it. So why are you changing the status quo? Why are you changing it? Look at Jesus. When he was leaving, he says, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. Right? He said, I'm not going to leave you as what? Orphans, but I'm going to send you. It is, even if he said a king, he says, well, a helper. He calls the Holy Spirit what? A helper. So we have been made to be helped. Tell your neighbor. Yeah. You need, huh? you need help from day one to whatever. You need what? You need help. So stop denying yourself from help. The people who are proud, they are the people that say that, Charlie, I don't need help. I can do it by myself. So if you are here and you are like that, please repent. Hallelujah. Please repent. Again. I said, image comes with what? Responsibilities. I'm still talking about image and knowing your place. Let's look at the book of um, Judges chapter 13, verse 1 to 5. Judges 13, 1 to 5. Again, the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. Mm. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines for 40 years. Mm. Now there was a certain man from Zorah of the family of Danites, whose name was Manoah. And his wife was barren and had no children. And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, mm. Indeed now you are barren and have borne no children. Mm but you shall conceive and bear a son. Mm. Now, therefore, please be careful not to drink wine or mm -hmm. not drink mm -hmm. and not eat anything unclean. For behold, you shall conceive and bear a son, Good. and no razor shall come upon his head. Yeah. For the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. No, that's just, just five. That's fine. Let's go back to verse four. Man of God, I four. want to see something. Now, therefore, please be careful not to drink wine. Hold on. He says what? Please, please be, be careful, careful not, not to, to drink, drink. This is Samson. The, the story of Samson, right? Samson was a judge in Israel, right? Oh, well, he was a deliverer in Israel. Now, before he was born, Bible declared that an angel of the Lord came to his mother and gave him what? We can call them what? Rules or standards. Even for the mother. Look at it. Now, when you look at the book of Judges, they are filled with so many deliverers. Right? So many deliverers. But look at the life of Samson. Look at the life of Gideon. Are they the same? Oh, tell me. Talk to me. They're not the same. Why is it that God didn't send an angel to Gideon's mother and said, you know what? Don't take this. Don't do that. When you read further, he says what? That he shall be what? A Nazareth. No razor should touch his hair. Because of what? The particular assignment that God had for something. These were the rules. These were the standards that God had for him. Now, I want to come into the area of marriage just a little bit. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Some of us get angry when we hear counsel like, Charlie, this man or this woman is not for you. You are angry. Or you get angry. This guy is a powerful man of God. <laughs> This guy is wonderful. This lady is wonderful. Why is it that the man of God is telling me that this guy is not for me? Why is it? Look, no, look at the life of Samson. This guy was told that no, let's take one, that's one of it. Was told that no razor should touch his hair. Can you dwell, I'm, I'm, I'm just creating a, a, an illustration for you. All right? Can you dwell with the man always that no razor should touch his hair? Can you? Oh, I'm, I'm asking you. Can you? <laughs> oh, no, I'm, I'm, it's, it's an illustration I'm painting here, okay? There are standards, there are rules that God has given to each and every one of you. Like I said, in the water form, there are three different forms. But different rules, different temperatures, different standards. So for the standard of the deliverer called Samson, he was not supposed to cut his hair. But we don't see that in the life of Gideon. But yet they are all deliverers. Right. Can you dwell with something? Have you been created to dwell with something? Have you? So when the council comes and says that, so, you know, I like this man. I like this woman. It's very powerful. But in the council of God, in the image and in the likeness of God, you were not created to be together. Because maybe you, you can't dwell with somebody with long hair. Hallelujah. Now, it's very fascinating. Samson was the deliverer, but the word, the standard also came for his mother. Because of the nature and the kind of assignment that was given to Samson, even his mother was asked not to drink wine or similar drink. So there comes a point in the life of a man of God. God may call me to be at a certain place. It will affect the people around me. Now, that does not give you the right or the audacity to fight the counsel of God. Hallelujah, are you here? That does not do what? Give you the right or the audacity to fight the counsel of God. Because in, from the beginning, when we read Romans chapter 8, verse 26 and 27, I think. It says, for those he foreknew, he predestined. Your assignment was predestined. Your image was what? Predestined. You, 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 you didn't determine that I'll be this, I'll be that. Yeah, come on, come on, come on. Right. Hallelujah. You, you did not. So don't come and then say that, oh, uh, I don't like the way this guy is doing. I, I'm, I can't. What, what do you mean? You, you can't do that. You can't do that. Hallelujah. You, you can't do that, people of God. So ask yourself, I'm giving you counsel, those of you who are here. Give us counsel. Give us counsel. One of the reasons, aside the fact that you can't marry a fever person, yes. aside the fact that Charlie, the guy might be Bongorascos or something. Hallelujah. There is a predestined counsel from God that this guy, even his mother, is not supposed to take wine. <laughs> that is fine. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So perhaps for you, you are supposed to move with a Caleb yeah. oh. or a Gideon yes. or a Samson <laughs> or a Barry. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are supposed to, you see, you see, you see. They said that what? A man, whoever finds a what? A wife finds what? A good thing and favor. You find favor. So somebody like Samson needs favor from God. So if God has not created you in the image and the likeness of the assignment of Samson, what are you doing in the life of Samson? Look at John the Baptist. Bible says, push it, push it. prophecy, there was a prophecy about John the Baptist. Look at a man like John the Baptist, okay? Uh -huh. Now, not, this is not gender bias. It's for oh. both men and women. Hallelujah. Good, it's for what? Both men and women. Hallelujah. Yeah. Look at someone like John the Baptist. This man was clothed in camel skin. And he was supposed to eat what? Locust and honey. You, what do you like? Do you like locust and honey? Can you live with somebody who was supposed to eat locust and honey? Yes. Yes. 
Hallelujah. And look at this man. Though. He was dwelling in the desert. Can you dwell in the desert? And then you come and then trouble somebody who was created to be in the desert. It's still, he was still representing the kingdom of God. People of God. He was, he was representing the kingdom of God. He was what? The forerunner of Christ Jesus. To propagate the gospel. That word. There's one that is coming. That is higher. Or that is better than me. That was his mission. So God created him in that place. To propagate the gospel. And let me tell you something. Sometimes, man of God, you bear with me. Sometimes you are there. God will tell you that don't go out. It's not because Tale out is not a Samuel. Uh, you don't understand. Sometimes God, because of what they call and the anointing, they are setting standards. They are setting restrictions. Let me put it that yeah, way. Yeah. That God demands from you. It's not like God is against you. Look at this microphone again. There are things inside this microphone that helps me to project my voice. That thing is not in this air condition. So I can't use the air condition to propagate my voice. It doesn't work. So when you, I go, or oh, I take this air condition, and I'm speaking, hey, hey, hey do this, do that. Can, can you hear me? Never. I can't hear you. You go against what? The counsel of God. Oh, God. Then I come to Mary, the mother of Jesus. Hallelujah. Look at Mary. Brothers, I mean, let me ask you this question. Imagine you are going to get married. Or something. <laughs> Imagine you are going to get married, and then your wife-to-be comes and says, I'm pregnant. Hey, hey. By who? <laughs> Holy Spirit. Come on. How? You got my life by you. <laughs> exactly. I have never seen a woman by herself getting pregnant. Where from this revelation? Where from this call? Where from this assignment? Where, where from it? Where does it come from? So, brothers, if you if you were uh, Brad Joseph, will you stay with that woman? You most 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 of you will not stay. Even when the angel of the Lord comes to you and says, "You know what? This thing is of God," yes. you will still say that. Uh-uh. This is not of God. And you see, Bible even states the intentions of Joseph. Joseph wanted to put her away at this quietly. Yes, silently. Because, Charlie, I can't bear this thing. Yes. But you see, the angel of the Lord came and told her, Charlie, what you are seeing is of me. Ah. It's from God. You see, there are things that God wants to do that has never been seen before, like the birth of Jesus in your life. And there are certain people that cannot associate with you because they can't take it. Oh. They were not created in the image, in the likeness of that assignment. So that is why that is why a course, a journey like marriage is so key, it's so special. Praise the Lord. When apostle tells us that word, renew your mind, find yourself, build yourself, it's for this reason. Oh. Maybe you are called to be a John the Baptist, to live in the desert and propagate the kingdom of God. But you, you want to live in Eden. Stop, stop that thing. Stop it. Stop it. When you, are doing, when you do that, you are not propagating the word of God. You are not propagating the word of God. Look at Mary again. Can you, ladies here or mothers here, can you bear looking at your child being crucified? Can you? Can you look at your child? You see, the Jesus films we watch, you know, they, they wrap something around him. Oh. You don't know. Can you stand looking at your, your child? Your special child? Child! And this guy was multiplying, doing powerful miracles in your house. I believe that Mary never had any luck. Tell him, tell him, Jesus, they're not sound. Okay. <laughs> and there was more. Then a time comes in your life. You see your own child. There's a man in our neighborhood, my neighbor actually. This man lost her daughter just a few weeks ago, nine-year-old daughter, and come and see him. Come and see him. And I tried to put myself in his shoes. I'm like, this guy is suffering. Look at a mother like Mary, looking at what? 
her dear son on the cross, just seeing my dear uh, blasting and seeing all manner of things about him that he did not do. And he was crucified. Can you stand there? Do you know why Mary was able to stand there? Even though she was grieving, she was made in that image. She was made in that what image in you. He has made you. There's a life. We read it earlier. There's a life. The old life is gone. The new life has begun. What made Mary able to stand and see her dear son? After all, she had many sons. Yeah. But she was able, even the people who were close to him were not there. The mother is a mother. She was standing there. Can you, maybe in the assignment God has given you, you are like a Mary. Can you stand that affliction that is coming? Can you? So when counsel is given that stay away from this guy or this lady, like recently, I'm sorry about using Recently, when a man of God came and spoke to her way, that this woman, because of what the grace and anointing on her life, she must marry a man of God. And even if the man of if the man doesn't want to be a man of God, that grace on her life will come upon the man. And you will become into Opawumpu, you'll be a man of God. Hallelujah. The council. The counsel of God. It says what? It was predestined. It was pre what? Destined. And then I ask you this question. If you think that indeed your life belongs to you, you are the originator of your life. Tell me who here determined the day he or she was born. Tell me. Or you determined that Mr. A and Mr. B will be my father and my mother. Who? Tell me who? Who here? Who here? That, oh, I want to be born on 5th September. Who oh, yeah, But look at the Lord Jesus Christ. God sent forth an angel to Mary that, look, you are going to what, bear a child. It was God who determined when he would come to earth. So this should tell you and I is that God is the only one who is the originator of life. He determines everything. You don't have a say in anything about the counsel, about the wisdom, about the kingdom of God. You don't have a say. All you have to do is to flow. So stop. Stop fighting against God's counsel. Was it this week or so? Prophet Abel was telling us about godly seeds. This is one of the reasons. This is one of the reasons we ought to produce what? Godly seeds. It's a form of what? Fruitfulness. So stop that thing. When you give you counsel, you say what? Well, the church, the pastors, the whatever, they are against me. Some will say, I don't, they, he doesn't want me to get married. What do you mean? Do you, do you understand the word called marriage? You, you don't know. You don't know. You, you, you think it's just scary. We come and play and go. Ah. It's work. It's work. You cultivate. Look at what God told Adam. Keep this garden. Keep it. Do you know how to keep? You may be able to keep a hundred thousand CDs. Can you keep one billion CDs? Can you? You think it's the same? The one who's hand, handling hundred thousand Ghana CDs and the one who's handling one billion Ghana CDs. You think it's the same? It's not the same. So if God has called you to manage a hundred thousand guys, be there. Hallelujah. It's very serious of you, God. It's very, so take note. This is one of the reasons why when a man of God tells you, you can't be with this person, you can't be with this man or woman, it's because of where you are going. So stop that. Hallelujah. Have you gone home? Hallelujah. Attaining the image. Attaining the image. Be careful of what you hear and consume. Adam and Eve were living peacefully and joined themselves until they heard. Until they heard. Be careful of what you hear. Then you hear that A, B, and C. Then because of that, you are maligning the church. You think that the church is against you. You think that, hey, be careful. One day God came to Abraham and said that well, those who bless you shall be blessed. And whoever curses you shall be cursed. 
Be careful. Another thing, be careful of how you talk to people. Be careful. Was it written on Abraham's face that Charlie, if you bless me, you'll be blessed. If you curse me, you'll be cursed. You will not see that. Be careful how you speak of Apostle Keith Lady Godson. Be careful. Be what? Be careful. The man we call our father is a man of covenant. Do you know how Israel got saved? Because of a covenant. They cried unto God and God remembered them by what? A covenant. The man we call our father is a serious man of covenant. No covenant. Be what? Careful. And be careful of the people that represent him. Be what? Be careful. Genesis 3, 8 to 11. And look at Numbers. Let's, no, let's go to Numbers 13, verse 31 to 33. Numbers 13, 31 to 33. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone, a spice is a land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak came from the giants, and we were like grasshoppers in their own what, sight. What is it? What's it then? And we were, we were like grasshoppers in Did our God own sight. Did God tell you that you were a grasshopper? Did God tell them that you people you are coming out as grasshoppers? What did he say? You are a kingdom of priests. Who's away from grasshoppers? Why are you telling yourself that Tale, nobody likes me? Who told you? When Adam was naked and he was hiding, he says, I hate because what? I was naked and I was afraid. And God asked him the question, who told you? In other words, for, for us, as citizens of, the, of God's kingdom, all we have to hear is the word from the king. If you are running by a, a, a standard, if you are running by a council, that is not from God. God is going to ask you, who told you? You are going to see yourself like the children of Israel. That saw themselves as, as what grasshoppers. Look at grasshoppers. Do you know grasshopper? They saw themselves as grasshoppers. How? The image of God. Rule. Have dominion. Grasshopper. Come on. So why are you calling yourself as what grasshopper? And when you move on to the next chapter, the Bible said the, the whole the congregation of Israel were crying because a brother or some ten brothers told them that Charlie. So you are telling. God, that what he said when he rescued you from Egypt, he's lying. Do you know God? Oh, Jesus. Why do you see yourself as a God? Is that the image God created for you? Is that, is that what God gave you to be grasshoppers? And any other thing, is that, is that why God put you here? Is that why God put you in Zion? Impact? Is that why God put you here? Why are you see yourself like that? Like a grasshopper. Why? Ask your neighbor. And anytime you see yourself in another image and in another form, you insult God, number one. And you move away from the purpose of God. You move away. So one of the reasons why we are not seeing kingdom expansions is because we are seeing ourselves as what? Grasshoppers. Who told you you are a grasshopper, Chris? Who told you? Who told you? Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 to 11. Philippians chapter Philippians 2, two five. 5 to 11. Are we okay? Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, mm. but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. Mm. And being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Mm. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. It's okay. Man of God, it's okay. He says God has exalted him and given him above every name because what he did certain things to attain that, that, that height, that image. So God has given you 
standards, rules to follow. For us to attain that height, we have to follow. He said, let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you. Let this mind be in you. Not any other mind be in you. Let this mind be in you. So that you attain the image that God has for you. Man of God, let's move to Second Peter chapter 1, verse 1 to 9. This one will do quickly. NLT, please. 2 Peter 1, 1 to 9. Then, okay, you, yeah, let's go. This letter is from Simon Peter, a slave and apostle of Jesus Christ. I am writing to you who share the same precision, precious faith we have. This faith was given to you because of the justice and fairness of Jesus Christ, our God and Savior. May God give you more and more grace and peace as you grow in your knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself, by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. In view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith yeah, with a generous provision Man, let's go. of moral excellence yeah. and moral excellence with knowledge mm -hmm. and knowledge with self-control mm. and self-control with patient endurance. Okay, hold on. You know the scripture, right? No, and add on to this. Add on. Please project the, the CD note. Powerful. We all know this note, right? You've, you've seen it before. You've used it before. Right? What makes this thing legit? What? I like that. What, what makes it? What makes it valuable? Oh, you don't know. Please give me the full screen here. Yeah, you can take the video. What, what makes it valuable? What makes it legit? Someone says governor. Someone says this and this and this and that, that, that. Now, if it is over here, maybe, over here is the signature of the governor, right? If I have the signature of the governor, can I make purchase with that? Just the signature. Many of us say that we've put on Christ Jesus, but we are not acting like Christ Jesus. Imagine if I come to you and I put on a doctor's coat with my stethoscope. What would you say? I'm a doctor, right? Yeah, when you say, oh, this guy's a doctor. But the moment you interact with me and realize that, hey, Charlie, this guy. <laughs> will you still call me a doctor? Will you still call me a doctor? Oh, talk to me. Please project, just, just the 100 CD notes, please. Will you still call me a doctor? No. Why? It's an error, exactly. So yes, the Bible says that we should put on Christ. And almost our, I don't know, almost everybody here has done what? Put on Christ. But we are not working Christ. So I may have the signature of the governor. I may even have Bank of Ghana. I may have this. I may have this serial number. I may have this Edinkra symbol. I may have this image, the big six, whatever. I may just have it. I may even have the coat of arms, which represents a certain um, identity of Ghana. But I cannot make purchase just with the signature of the Bank of Ghana, uh, Bank of Ghana's government. Governor, sorry. I can't. So just putting on Christ is not enough. So like the scripture we read, it says add on. So I add serial number. I add 100. I add Bank of Ghana. I add the signature. I add this note is issued on blah, blah, blah. I add the C a democracy. I add the big six. I even add the style, the form of the paper that was used, not any other paper that was used and then is signed and sealed by the government of Ghana. Then I can make purchase with this thing. So if you are not in alignment, even I may see, I may even have this one, the hundred here, and the see number here is not legit. I may have them. So Bible says that what? Add unto this. Do, do, you have come to church. I'm 
oh, uh, Christ, I'm a, I'm a born again. I'm the righteousness of God. I'm moving. I'm, and you are not adding on. Forget it. You can't make purchase. So do you know why some things you are not receiving? <laughs> it's either we've mixed these things or we don't have it. We have mixed it. We've mixed it. Hallelujah. The government of Ghana must assign its seal on this thing before you and I can make purchase. And it's the same in the kingdom. The governor of the kingdom must assign his word. Seal on it before you and I can make purchase. Before you and I can be fruitful. So being fruitful comes with this. Adding on the things that God has given to us. Like the man of God said that word. God has blessed us with what? All spiritual blessings in heavenly places. If you add all those things, then you can make purchase. Then you can rule. Then you can what? Have dominion. Then you will be in the image and in the likeness of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1. I want us to, okay. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. NLT. And we'll pray shortly. Therefore, I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. Hallelujah. It says what? This part, no, let's, let's just mention one. verse 1. I, a prisoner of, of serving the Lord, serving beg the Lord. you to lead a life Worthy of, of what? Your calling. Your, there's a life worthy of your calling. There's a there's a life like I told. There's a certain life form. There's a life form. There's a life form worthy of your calling. Hallelujah. For worthy for you have been called by your father, by your mother, by your ethnic group, by society, by who? By God. And then let's jump to seventeen to thirty-two quickly. 17. Same version. With the Lord's authority, I say this. Uh -huh. Live no longer as the Gentiles do, uh -huh. for they are hopelessly confused. Uh -huh. Their minds are full of darkness. Full of that, yeah. They wander from the life God gives because they have closed their minds uh -huh. and hardened their hearts against him. Uh -huh. They have no sense of shame. Uh -huh. They live for lustful pleasure uh -huh. and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. But that isn't what you learned about Christ. That isn't what you learned about Christ. So why are you doing it? Let's go. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of living, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, Truly, truly righteous, righteous and, and holy. holy. Is it though that nature is what? Truly righteous and holy. holy. Holy simply means set apart for a particular thing. So if I've set apart this phone for a particular thing, I can't use this phone for any other thing. If I've set apart this phone to just receive mails, even though it can receive calls, it's not supposed to receive calls. When you get this thing, can this phone receive calls? They can receive calls. But I have set this phone apart to do us receive mails. So any call that comes through, I can't pick. That's being holy. It's not like we can't just do anything. <laughs> We've been what? Set apart. We have been what? We have been set up. Don't, I, I can't. Remember, you can't just live any life. Oh, to me. You can't just, I, I, I'm going. No. I'm going. No. Set apart. Hallelujah. And finally, John chapter 13, verse 34 to 35. John 13, 34 to 35. So now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Hallelujah. It says Amen. what? Your love for one, one another will prove to the world. Will what? will prove to the world. So it's not just about putting on Jesus. It's not just about putting on Christianity or putting on the tag kingdom of God. By what? It says your love for one another, another will prove. Let's go to the, the New King James. 
will prove that you are my disciples. By this, all will know that you are my disciples. By this, all by what? This. What is that? Love. If you have love, love. This is this is what I'm ending with. Love, people of God. Love. We have to what? Love one another. It says, by this, they they will know that you are my disciples. Are you a disciple of Jesus? Are you a disciple of Jesus? Oh, you are not minding me. You are you are saying you are a disciple. Do you love? A true disciple of Jesus is one that is filled with what? Love for one another. Rise to your feet. It's what? Love. It's what? Love. You and I ought to have what? Love. We have to love one another. Everything I've said, this is where I'm landing. For us to be fruitful as a church, we have to love one another. I'm supposed to love Minister Sami. I'm supposed to love him. He's supposed to love. You're supposed to love. It's love, people of God. It's what? It's love. If you don't have love, you can't prove that you are a child of God. He says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He loved us. So when I'm loving you, I'm just expressing my likeness of God to you. Hallelujah. We are praying a very simple prayer. There's somebody here during this week you are praying for your mother. You are praying for your mother and that God touch your mother in a certain weakness. In a certain weakness. The Lord says he has heard your prayer. He has heard your prayer. He has heard your prayer. Wherever your mother is, the Lord has heard your prayer. The Lord has heard your prayer. Lift up your hands wherever you are, child of God. Lift up your hands. And we are praying and asking the Lord, help me to walk in the calling you have given unto me. Help me to walk in the calling you have given unto me. When you find that call and you walk in it, child of God, then you will see fruitfulness. An apple will only bear apple fruits. An apple cannot bear pears or strawberries or mangoes or whatever. An apple can only bear apples. That apple is walking in the call that God set for him. We are praying in the name of Lord, help me to walk in the call that you have for me. Lift up your voice. And speak to God. Lord, help me. 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 Jesus, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. From the bottom of my heart, I cry unto you. He says, this poor man cried unto the Lord. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Oh Lord, help me. Oh Lord, help me. 
Lord, help me to walk in the power of the Lord. Lord, help me. Lord help me. Lord help me. Cry unto God. Lord help me. Lord help me. Lord help me. Lord help me. Lord help me in the area of my calling. Lord help me in the area of my calling. Lord help me in the area of my calling. In the area of my calling, Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When you go home, please continue with this prayer. Lord, help me. Because, child of God, you see, when God comes in, he says you bear account. God gave one person five talents, one person two, one person one, according to their own abilities. When he came, he gave, they all had to give an account. The one who had one worked in a different calling. And he missed it. I don't want you to miss your call. God doesn't want you to miss your call. So please, find out. Has God given you five? Has God given you two? Has God given you one? Find it. In the name of Jesus we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. God bless you. It's time for our offering. If you have an offering for the Lord, you can please bring it forward.